I'm representing the Molecular Hygiene Foundation, which is a science-based nonprofit, and its focus is to educate and advance the awareness and research of hydrogen gas as a therapeutic medical gas. And so I'm, I'll briefly explain how hydrogen gas can benefit you and has benefited many people in some of the research and studies that are going on right now. Uh, first off, I want to explain what hydrogen gas is. So when I say molecular hydrogen, I'm, that, that is a gas. It's, a, it's hydrogen gas. You can think of the Hindenburg. It's, very, it's explosive. It's three times more energy dense than gasoline, which is why many have considered hydrogen the molecule of the century because it's been looked at for an alternative fuel source. But very recent research, primarily starting about 2007, the biomedical community has been finding that humans can actually ingest hydrogen via inhalation or you can take hydrogen gas and bubble it into water and then you can drink that hydrogen rich water and you can experience many therapeutic benefits. And so that's the hydrogen gas we're talking about. So let's first talk a little bit about the history of hydrogen gas. Uh, I mentioned 2007 and that's because that was the first main study that was showed that hydrogen can be therapeutic. It was published in a very respectable journal, the Journal of Nature Medicine, and the article showed that hydrogen could act as a therapeutic antioxidant by selectively scavenging the cytotoxic or cell damaging uh, free radicals. Now this is very important, so that's the one, one benefit we see is that hydrogen gas can be a therapeutic antioxidant. So in order to understand what an antioxidant is, let's briefly talk about free radicals. Well, free radicals, as you know, are very reactive species, and they, they actually contain an unpaired electron, for example, and they're, they're very damaging to the body, and they can damage your DNA, your RNA, your protein, cell membranes, and really they can be linked to virtually every disease and pathology that there is. When, when you have an apple and you cut it in half and it turns brown or you have rust that forms, that's all from oxidation. That can happen to our bodies as well. In fact, 2-3% to of all the oxygen that you breathe turns into these free radicals or reactive oxygen species. And so they get too much of these free radicals that can come from pollutants, the environment, from just normal cellular metabolism and the processing of food you produce these free radicals and it can be damaged into the body when their levels get too high. And that's why we need these antioxidants to combat against those oxidants. And that's what hydrogen gas can be. It can be a therapeutic antioxidant. Well, we've heard of antioxidants before. We have your blueberries and all sorts of vitamins. And so the question you may have is, how is hydrogen gas different than any of these other antioxidants? And I'll briefly talk about a, f a few reasons why. Number one, in that article in 2007, it mentions that hydrogen gas could act as a th therapeutic antioxidant by selectively scavenging the toxic radicals. So it's really the emphasis on the selective. And what that means is, in your body, as we mentioned, you have many free radicals or reactive oxygen species. And the fact is, not all of them are bad. Some of them are actually very good for you. So you have some of these free radicals, reactive oxygen species, are actually very important signaling molecules. They help for your immunity, like your white blood cells, for vascularization, your uh, endothelial or, or your widening of the blood vessels to help blood perfusion. All those are free, free radicals. Nitric oxide, that's a free radical. It's very good for you, very important for you. So you don't want to scavenge everything all the time. You need some of these, these oxidation, these, some of these oxidants. Well, hydrogen gas can actually will only scavenge the toxic free radicals, the ones that are very, very damaging, such as the hydroxyl radical. And that's because hydrogen gas is, is more mild in that it's not able to react with things like nitric oxide or superoxide radical, but will only react with very toxic radicals that are truly just cell damaging like the hydroxyl radical, which is produced via the Fenton reaction, the mitochondria. So that's the first thing to consider, is hydrogen gas has a superior than many other antioxidants in that, number one, it's selective. It's only going to go after the bad guys, leaving the good guys to do their, their job. Okay? The next one to consider is hydrogen gas has very high bioavailability. Bioavailability is a very important thing to consider because 
in order for an antioxidant or any nutraceutical or drug or anything to have any benefit to the cell, it has to actually get into the cell and even more so into the exact location where certain damage or certain things are occurring. So when we talk about the production of free radicals, those mainly occur inside of the mitochondria, which is an organelle inside of the cell, and these free radicals are produced. So in order for hydrogen gas to really go in there and selectively scavenge those toxic radicals, it needs to enter the cell. Well, the things that determine the bioavailability the most are, number one, size. Well, guess what? Hydrogen gas is the smallest molecule in, in the whole universe. It's smaller than oxygen. That allows it to easily and quickly diffuse into the subcellular compartments and through the blood-brain barrier or everywhere easier than virtually any other antioxidant. So that size. The other thing that also determines bioavailability is its charge or its polarity. Well, hydrogen gas is nonpolar, it's neutral, and that allows it also to very, very easily diffuse through the cell as well and get right to those hydroxyl radicals and scavenge them, neutralize them. So now we have, we have selectivity. We also have its high bioavailability. And the next one is the, about the byproduct. When hydrogen gas does scavenge the toxic radicals, there's no toxic byproduct. In fact, the byproduct is simply water. And if you consider other antioxidants, for example, if you have an antioxidant and that antioxidant gives away its electrons, well, now this antioxidant is lacking electrons, so it's not an antioxidant. In fact, it could be a prooxidant that could be even damaging to the body. So the body has to rejuvenate it with maybe NADPH equivalents or glutathione or different things. It has to clear it or metabolize it. It's got to get out of the system somehow or else it could be damaging. Whereas with hydrogen gas, hydrogen gas will react with those hydroxyl radicals and will convert them to water. And that's the byproduct, hydrogen plus oxygen equals water. So we've talked about its selectivity, we've talked about its bioavailability, and we've talked about that there's no toxic byproducts. And that's one potential reason that explains the marked therapeutic benefits of hydrogen gas. In fact, since 2007, there are now upwards of over 600 scientific publications that are showing the therapeutic benefits of hydrogen in over 170 different human and animal disease models, and essentially every organ of the human body. So when you consider that hydrogen gas has such a wide breadth of activity, well, it makes sense because, as we discussed, free radicals are implicated in virtually the pathogenesis of every disease. And so that could be one reason, again, why hydrogen gas has so many benefits. If you're interested in learning more, you can go to my website, molecularhydrogenfoundation.org, and you can click on Studies, and you can see many of these studies, including the human studies, there are maybe 40 or so different human studies, some clinical ones with rheumatoid arthritis, metabolic syndrome, Parkinson's disease. Uh, there's a number of ones that are very powerful, uh, very interesting. Of course, importantly, not everyone is going to experience a dramatic effect from hydrogen. Many people do. Many people just, the first time they're exposed to it, they're just like, wow, I, I used to have all this joint pain and now I can walk, or I used to have cognitive lapses, they can't remember things very well, or they're more alert, or they have more energy. It's, it's very amazing to see these things, but again, not everybody will experience that, but at least they may experience that therapeutic effect from its antioxidant property. In reality, more research needs to be done on hydrogen gas to really understand exactly how it's going, that, how it's working, the actual primary or, or molecular mechanisms of hydrogen gas. So more research needs to, needs to be done on this, more clinical studies, and that's again why I've, I'm working with this nonprofit, the Molecular Hydrogen Foundation, to help advance the research. And as more research is done, I believe it can be very beneficial to many, many people who may lack medical care or just need that extra help. The last thing I'll leave you with is just the fact that hydrogen gas appears to be very safe. Hydrogen gas is actually very natural to our bodies, one of the most natural things that there are, because every time that we eat uh, fibers from like fruits and vegetables, these non-digestible carbohydrates can be metabolized by our, our intestinal microflora to produce hydrogen gas. So we actually always have small amounts of hydrogen gas in our blood and in our breath. But yet when we inhale extra hydrogen gas, or when we drink hydrogen-rich water, or when we take hydrogen products, 
then those small amounts of additional hydrogen has been shown to be very therapeutic. In fact, they've actually used hydrogen gas to prevent decompression sickness in deep sea diving since the 1940s. So many studies have been done showing the safety. There could be some side effects. For example, hydrogen has been shown to have a slight anti-diabetic effect by maybe lowering glucose levels by its activation in GLUT4 translocation. But what that can mean for certain people who may be experiencing diabetes is it can lower the blood glucose levels slightly too much and maybe they don't feel very good. That, that's, a, that's a rarity thing that has been reported, but it, it's because of hydrogen's anti-diabetic effect. Uh, it's probably very rare, but it, it is a possibility. And as, as the other thing to consider when you're looking at hydrogen uh, products, hydrogen is, is a pretty big buzzword right now all throughout Asia and now growing in America. And so many companies or different products are coming out uh, promoting their hydrogen products. It's important to always verify that that product does indeed contain hydrogen gas. It has to be has to have hydrogen gas in there in order for it to be therapeutic. It has to be at a high enough concentration in order for it to work. So that's the one thing I would, I would recommend if you want to try hydrogen therapy is to, number one, make sure that the product you're looking at does have um, hydrogen gas in it. it. Because remember, it's not just water. Water is H2O, but those hydrogens are tied up with the oxygen. That's not going to be the benefit. It has to be f free hydrogen gas, if you will, that's dissolved in the water. So just to recap, We've talked about its hydrogen gas therapeutic property as being an antioxidant, as being having great selectivity, it's high bioavailability, it's no toxic byproduct. We've talked about many disease models that have been studied where hydrogen has been shown to be very therapeutic, has a very high safety profile, and I hope to spread the word and bring the awareness and the education and advance the research of hydrogen as a medical gas for its therapeutic applications and you can visit the website molecularhydrogenfoundation.org where you can learn more. Thanks for having me.